we are discussing the scheduling algorithms in operating system so the operating the scheduling algorithms are first come first serve fcfs then we have shortest job first priority scheduling is there then we have round robin and more of these are multi level queue scheduling and multi level feedback queue scheduling we'll take uh, these four first and we'll say the examples also first come first serve or fcfs scheduling is that jobs are executed on first come and first serve basis means the job which has come first will be served first the job which has come after it will be served after that this is quite easy to understand and implement so no complex logic is involved and uh, the performance is poor because the average waiting time because the process which are waiting may be quite longer and uh, the example would be something like this if we have process 1 to 4 and these are the burst time these are the burst cycle or the cpu cycle time they would require to complete they want this much of time to complete themselves what happens when p1 comes it will start from zero this is a gan chart for these processes so up till 21 it will go because 21 time it need after that because it has come first it will be served first then p2 has come now it will be served so 21 to 24 it required three burst time of three cpu cycles it will run for 24 till 24 then p3 p3 has come p3 will be catered and then finally p4 so what will be the waiting time p2 has to wait 21 p1 has to wait 0 so p1 has to wait 0 p p2 has to wait 21 cycles 21 p3 uh, has to wait from here to here so it will be 24 and p4 has to wait from 0 to 30 so that is 30 so if we add all these and divide it by 4 it will be 18.75 millisecond right then shortest job first shortest job first means as the process arrives or process are coming say p1 to p4 process are in ready queue they are in ready queue now these needs to be processed so when they are need they need to be given to cpu the cpu must know in shortest job job first scheduling that the time required for each of them to complete is it possible how the process or how the processor is going to know prior that what time they are going to need so quite impossible to implement but we'll still see the average waiting time 21 3 six and 2 just compare p4 is the shortest job time it will take to complete so p4 will be catered first after that it will be 3 so p2 will be catered then it will be p3 because now the in if you arrange them in uh, the say ascending order you will see 6 will come after 3 so now p3 and finally 21 is the largest so 21 will be catered so what will be the waiting time 0 plus 2 plus 5 plus 11 means p4 has to wait 0 p2 has to wait 2 p3 has to wait 5 and p11 has to p1 has to wait 11 say millisecond if you add them and divide by 4 it will be 4.5 milliseconds quite good so we can have a preemptive shortage of scheduling also jobs are put into ready queue as they arrive but as soon as as soon as the process with shortest burst time arrives the existing process will be preempted this is the arrival time which is we have added this is the column of arrival time these are the burst time that is this these are the time which these processors are going to take to complete themselves see when at the time zero nothing is there only p1 is there so p1 will remain here after this p2 has come at one so the at one this has the great, greater um, in the shortest job means this is the shortest so p2 will be given the cpu cycles and it will complete it will uh, complete itself till 2 because at 2 at 2 this 6 has come but there is no problem 6 will not be catered but at 3 2 has come 
so it will go up to 3 but at this point 3 p4 has come p4 has come so p4 will be given a chance p4 will be given a chance and now p4 will complete it requires only 2 so p p4 has to wait 0 time now as we have just seen that uh, p4 needs only 3 it is completed so p2 is uh, is requiring only one cycle so one cycle it will complete right now p3 p3 because it has come at 2 but because of p2 and p3 it has to wait here and how much wait it has to do 6 because 6 at 6 it will start but it has already come at 2 so it has to wait till some time then uh, next is p1 p1 uh, has already completed 1 so it has to wait from 0 to this 1 to 12 so this has to wait till 12 minus 1 that is 11 and uh, then this uh, p3 p3 has to wait till because p3 uh, has to wait from here from here and it has already come at 6 so 6 minus 2 will be with the waiting time of p3 how about p2 p2 will do what p2 p2 has completed it has come at 1 and at the time it has come p2 it has been given chance so it has to wait nothing here but p2 has to wait for this to complete so that it can get another chance so 5 minus 3 is the waiting time of p2 so what is the waiting time 5 minus 3 plus 6 minus 2 plus 12 minus 1 so you can just calculate it it will be 2 plus 4 plus 11 by 4 so this will be 4.25 the average waiting time for preemptive shortage of first scheduling is less than both non preemptive sjf scheduling and first come first serve scheduling priority scheduling priority scheduling is based on the priority the priority is assigned to each of the process and the process with the highest the lowest priority number is the highest priority so the process with highest priority is executed first and so on and so forth and process they when they come with same priority they are executed in first come first serve manner if they have the have the same priority and how the priority are decided the priority are decided on the basis of memory requirement time requirement and any other resource requirement so what will happen here first of all p2 will come because it has the uh, least priority means the greatest priority and least number then 2 that is p1 will come then the 3 this p1 will come and then that finally this p3 will get a chance what will be the average waiting time 0 3 24 26 add them divided by 4 it will be 13.25 round wrong now there are some advantages and disadvantages we have seen in the previous scheduling algorithm uh, round robin wants to uh, manage it so what we can do here is we can give some uh, chunk of time or C cpu cycle and we will decide it prior say in this example we will give only five cycles to any process and when this is completed the chance will be to the next process so every process will get a chance to get into the cpu first of all right how it happens see first of all this p1 will come so p1 will come it will go up to 5 because the quantum time is 5 after that it has to be preempted it will be taken off then next one is p2 p2 will come it will it only takes 3 the quantum time is 5 so it will be completed prior to that after that p3 will come p3 uh, requires 6 we have given the time as 5 so it will complete or it will go up to 13 and then it will again come out it will be placed in the uh, ready queue or say waiting and then ready queue then p1 will come right again see p1 p2 p3 p4 p1 p2 p3 4 is like this so what has happened p2 is already finished so will not p2 will not come here again after that after this completion p4 will come but p4 only requires p4 how much it requires you know only 2 so 13 to 15 it will complete and it will not come again you will not see p4 and p2 again here but as this is completed p1 p3 are still remaining p1 will come p1 will come it will go for four uh, five cycle then p then it will again go back to the ready queue and then p3 will be taken and p3 only requires one because six five is already completed so six minus five one cycle is needed so one cycle is it will complete 
and then p1 for 5 then 5 and only after that one is really needed because it is 21 so it will complete here the average waiting time will be 11 milliseconds you have to uh, take the the uh, waiting time also in the waiting queue how to compare the scheduling algorithm that is uh, what are the disadvantages and advantages of various scheduling algorithm we have just seen first come first service. it doesn't involve or include any complex logic we just have to put the process of take the process requests in a queue and execute it one by one the way they have come so fcfs is pretty simple and easy to implement and every process will get a chance to run and there will be no starvation the disadvantage is there is no option of preemption of this process if a process is has started the cpu execute the process until it ends and since there is no preemption if process is executing for long for long time the processes in the back of the queue which are waiting has have to wait for a long time before they get their chance to be executed next is short shortest job first sjf and as we have seen in the definition the jo shortest job are executed first and then the longer one and then by this way so in ascending order of time they will be taken care the throughput increase is increased because more processes can be executed in less amount of time but what are what are the disadvantages how to know beforehand by cpu that which process is going to take what time okay so this is a challenge and longer process will have to uh, have more waiting time and eventually they are going to suffer the starvation so preemptive shortage job uh, for shortage job for scheduling uh, will have similar advantages and disadvantage round robin round robin what happens each the advantages are each process is served by cpu for a fixed quantum of time so all the process are given the same priority starvation will not occur because of each round robin cycle every process is given a fixed time to execute and no process is left behind but this disadvantage is it totally depends on the quantum time you have taken if you have taken larger time means the choice of length of time if it is um, longer then the it actually becomes as fcfs if the time quantum is shorter then the context switch will be too much because the process has to be taken in taken out taken in taken out from the cpu cycles so that will increase the overhead and that will lead to the decrease in the cpu efficiency priority based scheduling what are the advantages and disadvantages in the priority the priority of a process can be based on various uh, you know parameters memory requirement time requirement or user preference for example if you have a high end game with better graphics it requires that means the process which updates the screen in the game will have will gain the higher priority uh, just to achieve better graphic performance and sometimes you know you may not want that but uh, this is the advantage that you want it will happen as the priority goes the disadvantage is that if the priority are same the process are coming with the same priority the second scheduling algorithm has to be used two that is it will be fcfs again in a preemptive priority scheduling the higher priority process can execute ahead of an already executing lower priority process so if the lower priority process keeps waiting for this higher priority process uh, process to complete this starvation will occur so let us see certain situation in which in which situation you have to use what situation one is what the incoming process are very short and there is no need for the process to execute in a specific order in this case which one is the best scheduling algorithm fcfs this works best when as compared to sjf and rr because the process are short which means there that no process will wait for a longer time and when each process is executed one by one every process will be executed eventually the situation two is like this we have long and short processes mix of this is there and the task will only be completed if all the process are executed successfully at a given time here round robin scheduling will be the best because it does not cause starvation and it will also give equal time quantum for each process situation 3 we have user based and kernel based process the process are blend of this here the best is priority based scheduling 
बिकॉज द कर्नल बेस्ड प्रोसेस दे हैव हायर प्रायोरिटी देन योर प्रोसेस और यूजर बेस्ड प्रोसेस फॉर इंस्टेंस द शेड्यूलर इट सेल्फ इज अ कर्नल बेस्ड प्रोसेस सो इट इज इट शुड रन फर्स्ट सो दैट इट कैन शेड्यूल अदर प्रोसेस so this was about the scheduling algorithm we have seen the examples also and we have seen the advantage disadvantage along with when to use what thank you so much take care of yourself